So now we've built a few different uh, switch circuits in, in the lab. Uh, we're going to move on. We're still going to be building switch circuits, but we're going to use a, a little bit more complicated switch. Some of you have noticed that there's more than one type. We've been using a fairly small one. The next one we're going to move on to is a little bit bigger. So before we talk about what the next switch circuits are, though, I want to go back and talk about what we've done. Uh, I've had this conversation with a number of different students more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I want to make sure everybody's got this message. Um, make sure everybody has this information moving forward because this is going to be really helpful in understanding what comes next. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at the scenario where the power comes not into the switch but into the light first. So when the power comes into the switch it's pretty straightforward, right? We just morette the whites together to get the neutral on through and we, we control the hot, okay? The two black wires go on the switch. But when the power comes into the light fixture first, how do we get the switch to control the light? Well, let's draw our light. So we have the black wire is constant power. So we don't want to put it on the light, right? Because we don't want the light all the on all the time. We want the light to be controlled by the switch. So we've got to bring the constant power over here. So that's our black wire. We're going to have to do something with it, right? The white wire completes the path so that we can have current flow when we want that light to be on. And so we need that over here on the light. So let's come around here and put it on right there. So there's the white wire already on our light, ready to complete the circuit. Okay. What we need down here at the switch, so here's our switch. Okay. Here's the wire that runs between the two boxes. We only need two conductors. We need one conductor to bring the power down to the switch and a second conductor to take the controlled power back up and on to the light. So that's one wire. This is the wire that we need to morette on over here to get the power down to our switch. Now we've got to figure out some colors. I already decided that the white from the power supply is going to go on the light. Okay, and so the other wire here that's feeding the light ought to be a black wire, right? So that is this wire right here, controlled by the switch, taking that controlled power up to the light. So we only have one wire left, which has to bring the power down to the switch, and that's the white wire. So here's the thing. Inside this box, we see a black wire and a white wire and we're together. That looks weird. But for a veteran electrician, even a, a young electrician or an apprentice, uh, very quickly learns to recognize that for exactly what it is. Okay, and we call this a switch leg. We give it a special name. We call this a switch leg. We drop the switch leg down to the switch so that we can use that switch to control the light. Okay? Now, there is, however, a problem, and there's a reason why I'm going to draw it a second time is because we didn't build it this way in the lab. Because you're no longer allowed to do this according to the latest edition of the codebook. Okay? What has changed is that the codebook now requires a neutral at every switch location. And look, we don't have a neutral here. We have used the white as part of the circuit. It's a hot. It's bringing constant power down to the switch. Okay? And so this connection is no longer valid. Okay? Doesn't meet the requirements of the newest codebook. You'll see this out there all over the place. It's been done for years and years and years. So when you go into existing installations, you will see this all over the place. Okay, we can no longer build this. And so we didn't, did we? In the lab, we had to do this differently. So here's our AC power supply. Comes in. Okay, here is our light. Okay, same scenario, this black wire can't go right on the light, it's got to go through the switch. So we're still going to bring the black wire over here. We're going to morette it to a wire that's going to carry on down onto our switch. We need a wire from the other end of the switch to go back up. And that is going to be our power to feed our light. Okay, 
did this in a slightly different order, didn't I? Back up to the power supply. This is 14.2. I didn't mention that here, did I? There. Now things are complete. So we've got the black wires, our constant power. The other wire here is going to be the white wire. And we're going to bring it over and put it right there. Okay, so that so far is exactly what we did here. I just have some colors I need to finish filling in in terms of the lights, or in terms of the wires rather. What's different is that we ran a three conductor down there. And so there's a third conductor here. And this, we're just going to cap it off. That's the white wire. That's required by the newest code book. Okay? So we also have that white wire up here. And in fact, what we're going to do, we didn't do this in the lab, but I would suggest that in the future, I felt like we had enough other things to think about, but this would make sense. Let's connect that white wire right there, ties to the white wire from the power supply, so that this is now a true neutral, well, not a neutral, sorry, but an identified conductor because it is a grounded conductor that goes all the way back to the power supply and just sitting there waiting to be used. Okay, but what do we have left? Okay, this long line represents the white wire. The other two wires within a three conductor are black and red. Okay, let's come back here for a second. We brought the power down, okay, to our switch using power down on the white wire. And then we brought the controlled power back up. So this is the controlled power back up to the light on the black. Okay? Those are the colors that we used. All right? Uh, I think I want to jump ahead for just a second, and then we'll come back here and finish this. So in terms of labeling on a switch, okay, we know that we can hook this switch up backwards and it doesn't change anything. All right? You take the two wires that are on the top screw and the bottom screw and you flip them, it doesn't change a thing. Nothing happens. But in terms of labeling, so we can identify things, okay, we have names for, for the two sides of the switch. And it's all about what those sides of the switch are connected to. So this side connected back to the power supply, we refer to this as the line side of the switch. The other side of the switch, right here, this is the side of the switch that's connected to the light, okay, which is the electrical load in our circuit, and so we call this the load side. Okay, So in this scenario, the white wire brings the power down, that is the line side of the switch, and the load side of the switch takes the black back up to feed the light. Okay, Over here, what do we have? Okay, well, given the choice, given the choice, our line side, we are going to use the black wire, and the load side, we're going to use the red wire. Okay, if those two wire colors are available to us, we're going to make that choice. All right, so that means that the black wire is going to connect to the black wire to bring the line down to the switch. That's black. And then the load side of the switch is red going back up. And so this is going to be the red wire here feeding our light. Okay, this is the way we built it. All right, but I wanted to come back and talk a little bit about this the notion of writing the black and the white wire together. Okay, because this conversation is going to return as we move forward and look at the next circuit.